Hi everyone, okay so we're going to do a quick tutorial today. I'll be showing you two different methods to create a wine glass in Fusion 360. We'll be using the revolved and the loft functions and if you check the description I've actually apply, uh, I've supplied a link to the image that we're going to be using. It's just for a standard wine tasting glass. So once you've got the image, go into Fusion 360, say insert attached canvas. We'll be inserting it onto this plane. Go ahead and find your image, open it out and just insert it and in. let's just increase the size. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to make mine 5. And you can see we've got an ISO standard wine tasting glass. So now in order to actually create a glass like this, we're going to have to create half a sketch profile and then revolve this 360 degrees. So I'm going to show you my approach uh, towards actually completing that um, profile sketch. So I'm going to start off by creating a line. Just select this as the plane. And we'll start right here at the bottom. Now I'm going to switch to spline and a sketch and I'm using spline so that I can just get these curves as you see in the wine glass. Now once I get here I'm going to switch back to the line tool so you just go straight. Now actually I'm going to go back to the canvas, I'm going to say um, edit canvas, I forgot to do this in the beginning and I'm just going to put my opacity on 40 just so I can see what I'm actually sketching here and I'm going to click on display through as well. That's probably uh, the best thing that you should do because I couldn't really see my line over there. Okay so now we can continue sketching, I'm going to select the line tool again, I'm going to hold down the left mouse button, it will create an arch and then I'm going to go back to my spline and just complete the rest of this wine glass sketch. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and offset this. Negative offset. That should be fine. And then uh, over here, I'm going to complete my sketch like this and the reason why I'm drawing the particular sketch like that is when we actually revolve the sketch uh, with this particular sketch profile it's going to basically enable this part of the wine glass to be hollowed out. Okay so just I'm going to draw this down and obviously there's a part at the top that's not connected so you want to make sure that the sketch is completed over there. And I'm just going to trim these sketches remove those sketches and then you can see over here I want to give this a little bit of a softer transition so I'm going to use the fillet uh, function right click I'll click on OK now we can actually hide our canvas and you should have a sketch profile like this so now you'll see once we go to create and revolve we select this as our profile and our axis will be this um, vertical line that you see over here. And as soon as you click on that, uh, it revolves at 360 degrees and you've got a wine glass and you can see it's hollowed out as well. All right. And then you can obviously go back if you want to, you can apply some fillets to these edges. It's completely up to you. All right, so let me show you another method for creating a wine glass. Okay, so the next um, the next way to actually create a wine glass will be using the loft function. Well, the power of the loft function means that we'll be able to dynamically change the shape of our wine glass. You'll notice that this was basically restricted to a particular sketch and we had to make sure that that sketch was accurate enough in order for it to be revolved 360 degrees. But the power of the loft function will allow us to dynamically change our shape of our glass. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to select the line tool We'll select this plane. Now I've basically uh, explained this, this method in a previous tutorial but I guess I'll show you guys again how to do it uh, for this purpose for creating a wine glass and it basically involves you creating different levels and on these different levels we'll be constructing a plane at an angle. So let's start here at the bottom. Let's create our first level and let's sketch up and our second level will be created over here. 
and we'll sketch up again. We'll create our third level over here. And we'll sketch up again. Our fourth level, and then our final level right here at the top. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and we want to construct a plane at an angle on each of these different levels. You want to make sure that your plane is at that exact same angle. If it's not at this angle, just rotate it 90 degrees. Right click on OK and just construct a plane at an angle at every single level. Alright, now we've got our different planes that we can start sketching on. So let's, let's select our top plane. I'm going to be selecting a center diameter circle. I'll select the top plane. I'm going to try and make my circle about the same size as this. So I'm just going to eyeball that. That should be fine. Click on OK, stop sketch. Let's head to our, ne our next level and create a sketch here as well. We'll make this one uh, slightly bigger. All right, stop sketch. Let's head to our next plane. This one will make a little bit smaller because of this transition over here. So just select this plane. That should be fine. Stop sketch. And on this plane, we'll make it the same size as that circle. Stop sketch. Then the bottom plane is going to be this bottom piece over here. So you select the bottom plane and this will be our biggest circle sketch. Right, so once you've got all of those different sketches on these different planes, we can go ahead and use the loft function. And you'll see your, your shape start to evolve uh, over, over time. And the order that you select these sketches in determines its shape. So let's go to Create and Loft. We'll select this as our first profile and just work our way down. So you'll see as soon as I click on the next profile, it's starting to create that shape. We'll click on the next one, and then our final one here at the bottom. All right. Now, as I said, uh, the power of the loft function allows us to dynamically change the shape of our wine glass. So if you want a bunch of different iterations, um, we're capable of doing that just by clicking on these different points, and we can move them either down, we can move them up, And you can see our shape just dynamically changes over time. Uh, now there's a point over there that I can't, and I'm actually struggling to get to, uh, but you can, I can still select it, there we go. Then like I said, now you can create, um, you know, a large variety of different, different shaped wine glasses, but obviously this technique isn't limited to wine glasses, so if you've got a, a lot of different objects that you're trying to know create different iterations of uh, this particular method using the loft function will help you achieve those results now if you've actually completed your wine glass like this and you wanted to hollow it out I'll show you how to do that as well you also see there's some extra geometry at the bottom so in order to create that I'm just going to select this bottom plane right click go to extrude and just extrude that down so we've got that support for the wine glass here at the bottom. Make sure my operations on join. So if I want to hollow this out at the top, let me just hide the sketch. If I want to hollow this out at the top, I'll just select this top plane. Zoom in, I'll go to shell. And I just have to drag this arrow and it'll automatically hollow out the wine glass for us. All right, then you can go back and apply a filler to this. There we go, guys. Two different methods for creating wine glasses. I uh, hope you find these techniques useful. Uh, use them in your projects to create different iterations. And uh, thanks for watching my tutorial. Stay tuned for some more. All right. Goodbye.